everybody, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR. Um, today I want to talk about something that's kind of been on everybody's uh, minds lately, which is camshafts, right? And more importantly, more to the point, how to pick a camshaft. And it's not going to be the right way to pick a camshaft. Like if you're here trying to figure out how to build a NASCAR motor or an IndyCar motor, this is not how you pick a camshaft. But if you're just trying to turn like 800 horsepower into a bunch of tire smoke and noise and have a good time, this is kind of the way to pick a camshaft and it's the way I pick camshafts. Um, the simplest way to do it, and this applies to every engine, I don't care if it's a Gen 3 Hemi or Gen 1 Hemi, a, a Red Ram Hemi, an Olds 303, it doesn't matter. There's only so many ways to skin a cat, right? So you get these people who are like, I got a custom ground cam and all this other crap. How many ways do you think there are to grind a cam for a 350 Chevy or a 383 with a 10 to 1 compression ratio? The way that I like to think about it is that any given engine, particularly the heads and the compression, is going to support so much horsepower. Like you always hear that an engine is an air pump and nobody really explains exactly what that means but the way that I think about it is that you can get say you can get I don't know 5.3 a 5.3 LS a stock 5.3 LS with 706 heads and the stock pistons in it is gonna make about 350 360 horsepower it, it doesn't matter what you do that's how much it's capable of supporting so let me slide this over here and let's try to get rid of flow if we can. Nope, flow's here to stay. That's really a bummer. We'll just Google this real quick. So here. You can see this peak carried out here. It deviates from the stock curve down here. Like, this is how much air, how much horsepower this engine's capable of. And it's way out at seven grand. I don't even know what it is. Um, and you can slide this peak up this way maybe a little bit or carry it out that way. You can certainly move it down with less cam, but whatever the max is, is, is what it is, right? You can make these come together, the torque and the horsepower uh, come together earlier or later. But it's capable of making what it's capable of making. And, and that's just really all there is to it. So really the way to go is just find a combination that works and copy it. Which is why so many people run out and buy the Sloppy Stage 2. It's not the best cam, but it's a pretty good cam. And when it was $220, it was a great cam. Now that it's $240, $260, $270, it's not a great cam. The Summit cams are better. The 8716, or maybe it's the 19. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. doesn't matter. Don't put too much thought into this. If you're just a guy trying to do burnouts, don't drive yourself nuts. The factors that I think of, first of all, do I want a converter? A converter is a significant cost, right? It's five, six hundred bucks. Do I want one? And Daryl, I have one. And Jewel, I don't think I will have one. I don't think Mrs. Engineer cares about having a converter. It's got 256 gears in it anyway. I really just, it's going to be a dog out of the hole no matter what. I don't feel like changing the gears. So that automatically limits me to certain cams. Do I want to spend a bunch of money on springs or not? Um, push rods, do I want them or not? Those are the things that you need to know. Now, when people say reduce base circle, like all the LS cams and sometimes on the Gen 1 stuff, like stroker engines, will get reduced base circle cams. Any long rod 400 will need a reduced base circle cam because the rod will clip the camshaft in the block. A lot of stroker engines have that problem. So they'll go in and they'll reduce this. This is the base circle. They'll reduce that so that they can get a taller lobe effectively. So instead of, say, this distance from the center line to here is, I don't know, 500 thousandths. 
It's not going to be because there's a rock and arm ratio or whatever, but just to make the math easy, we'll say it's 500 thousandths. Okay? And the distance from here to here is 250. So 250 of its lobe. If you reduce this by 100 thousandths, you can increase the lift by 100 thousandths. That's why they do reduce, reduce base circle cams. If you do that, you'll need a hundred thousandths longer push rod. Maybe, probably, but you should really measure it to be sure, always. Which is why I just stick with stuff like the sloppy stage two on an LS, anything under 600 thou isn't gonna be reduced base circle as long as it's not a regrind. So I can just jam my stop push rods back in there and carry on. Um, A lot of people will split hairs over four degrees of duration or ten thousandths of lift or again in the same like you're all out there building this and especially if we're talking about ls engines you're, you're all out there building the same eight combinations okay four more du degrees of duration or four less aren't going to make or break the thing uh, three degrees of advanced ground into it versus two degrees of it. Yes, it changes stuff, but it's just not going to alter your life. You're not even going to know. I could totally swap them out and you wouldn't know the difference. I guarantee it. And then you get the people that want to be like cam scientists and everybody's like, I wonder how that would react with boost. It'll fucking go faster. That's how it'll react with boost. If you jam 10 PSI in it, it will go faster and do cooler burnouts. It doesn't matter if it's an NA cam. It doesn't matter if it's a turbo cam. Richard Holder's done all this testing and it's all on his channel. And I think he's a great guy, but people just put way too much science into all this. Pick a cam that you know works and stick it in your junk and go do burnouts. And it's really that simple. You don't need to spend for an LS, you don't need to spend four or 500 hours on a cam and springs. You just don't. You're 5.3. I know you're all special snowflakes and everybody wants to be different than everybody else. But there's a reason why there's an accepted way of doing things in general, in life. Do you see anybody picking dog turds up off the side of the road and eating them? How do you know they're not chocolate? How do you know these furry little creatures aren't magical from some magical realm, pooping out little turds of goodness for you to come pick up? You've never tried it. Don't knock it till you try it. No, we don't eat dog turds because we just accept the fact that they're turds. And you should just accept the fact that a cam works and use it. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to go eat nachos. Um, thanks for watching, guys. I can go and define all these things for you if you want to know what they really are. But I really don't think, you know, if you're watching this channel, you really don't need to know. Pick a cam that you know works. I have other videos on it. Other people have other videos on it. The Sloppy Stage 1, the Sloppy Stage 2, the Summit Cams, the 8706, the 8719. They work. It's okay to tell somebody, I have a Stage 1 cam. I know people on the internet are going to be like, hey, you shouldn't call it Stage. It's a baby, baby. And you know, I want to know how. Who cares? Who cares? It's a perfectly legitimate way to categorize what camshaft you're running and whether it's mild or wild. So, don't put too much thought into this stuff. Just have fun. And don't spend a lot of money. If you want to spend a lot of money, send it to me and Peanut. We'll buy steaks and bones. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Be sure to like and subscribe or dislike and subscribe or whatever combination of things you want to do. We'll see you later on the Driveway Engineer.